Welcome to another lecture on the history of art. The early Renaissance period is from around 1401 to 1490. It is also known as Quattrocento. It is an Italian short for Mille Quattrocento, meaning 1400, and refers primarily to the period dominating the 15th century in Italian art. Italy experienced a cultural rebirth. It turned away from the Gothic and Romanesque iconography. Florentine artists were inspired by classical art from the Greek and Roman era, and they focused on humanism and individualism. Early Renaissance artists began to create work intensified by knowledge of architecture, philosophy, theology, mathematics, science, and design. They began to use new artistic techniques, such as one-point linear perspective, derived from an understanding of math and architecture. And they also developed a new style of shallow carving to create atmospheric effect known as relief schiacchiato. They also used foreshortening, naturalistic and anatomical detail. They focused on proportion, the use of chiaroscuro and trompe to create illusionary realities. Their work focused on new subject matter, such as history, battle scenes and portraits. Humanist philosophy led them to believe and illustrate that there were more ways to experience than that which just the church dictated. We see the emergence of art patrons, and it was not the church that was the sole commission of art anymore. Art was now meant to be displayed in churches, but also in the private homes of wealthy individuals. We see the rise of the Medici family in Italy, and due to their wealth and their interest in art, they influenced the art-making process greatly. The Proto-Renaissance refers to artists of the 14th century who developed the naturalistic approach that came to fruition in the early Renaissance. Artists who are great examples of this are Giotto and Cimabue. They kept alive the aesthetic principles of classical art with works which laid the groundwork for the following Renaissance period. Senna di Pepi, also known as Cimabue, created primarily religious works. Cimabue's works emphasized naturalistic elements, such as is seen in his Santa Croce crucifixion from 1287 to 88. It was still placed within Byzantine iconography, but the work innovatively drew upon anatomical observation to create a sense of Christ's physical and emotional suffering. Giotto di Bodone, known as Giotto, was an assistant to Cimabue. He was named the great master of Florence in 1334. The Scrovegni chapel frescoes from around 1303 to 1310 are a great example of Giotto's groundbreaking work. He rejected Byzantine iconography, which was still popular with his contemporaries. He depicts figures naturalistically, with emotion and taking up dimensional space. 
The Triumvirat of the early Renaissance consists of Brunelleschi, the architect who discovered linear perspective, Donatello, who specified in sculpture, and Masaccio, who specialized in painting. Their work was influenced by humanism and classical Greek and Roman art and architecture. They lived in the Republic of Florence, also home to the wealthy Medici family. The Republic of Florence was a city-state that identified itself as heir to the classical tradition. It referred to itself as the New Athens. The city was ruled by the merchant class and noble families, primarily the Medici family, which was to become a ruling dynasty that lasted until 1737. The Medicis were a trade family. They got their fortune from the textile trade. In 1377, Giovanni di Bicchi de Medici founded the Medici Bank in Florence. His son, Cosimo de Medici, never occupied office, but used his wealth and political alliances to become, in effect, the ruler of Florence. Cosimo de' Medici was a major patron of the arts. He commissioned artworks, he collected classical texts, and he supported cultural projects like the founding of the first public library. Private patronage by wealthy families became an important driver of artistic creation, allowing for subjects and treatments that were off limits for religious and civic commissions. Florence hosted a competition for a commission for new bronze doors for the Baptistry of St. John. The doors would contain panels representing scenes from the Old Testament, and seven sculptors were selected to design a single panel showing the sacrifice of Isaac for the competition. Only Lorenzo Ghiberti's and Filippo Brunelleschi's designs have survived, and both works reflect a humanistic and naturalistic Renaissance style. Both works were admired, and artists were asked to work together on the project. But Brunelleschi withdrew, and Ghiberti alone took on the project, which in the end made him famous. Brunelleschi, bitterly disappointed when his design did not win the competition, abandoned sculpture and turned his attention to architecture, setting Renaissance in motion. Filippo Brunelleschi sold his farm and embarked on self-imposed exile to Rome. His friend and artist Donatello joined him on his journey. For several years, they measured buildings, took extensive notes, and researched classical design principles. Abandoning his focus on sculpture for architecture, Brunelleschi developed his theory and practice of perspective and the mathematical principles of design. By 1418, he was back in Florence, and he won the competition to build a dome for the cathedral. Donatello, or Donato di Niccolo di Beto Bardi, was lifelong friends with Brunelleschi. His works became the first artworks to use linear perspective, as seen in his marble St. George and the Dragon from around 1416. He used perspective and pioneered relief schiacchiato, a new style of shallow carving to create atmospheric effect. The Feast of Herod from around 1423 to 27 is a bronze relief that combines emotional expressiveness and classical form with a perspective system. It is based upon orthogonal diagonals and transversals to draw the viewer's eye 
into the empty space between the two groups at either ends of the table, thus creating a sense of tension. Masaccio is sometimes called the father of the Renaissance. His career lasted only seven years because he died at the young age of 27 of the plague. His work employed linear perspective and naturalistic figurative treatments in a new way that revolutionized painting. He was also friends with Donatello and Brunelleschi. Brunelleschi's work on perspective influenced Masaccio as he consulted the older artist on his The Holy Trinity from 1427 to 28. It is considered to be one of the earliest examples of perspective use in painting. Masaccio's painting's innovations included the use of one-point perspective, a trompe l'oeil approach, naturalistic modeling of the human figure, and a single consistent light source casting accurate shadows. He also pioneered the use of chiaroscuro, thus creating the illusion of depth and portrayed his figures with emotional expressiveness, conveying their individuality. Leon Battista Alberti was a notable intellectual theorist of the early Renaissance due to his three volumes, De Statua, on sculpture from 1435, De la Pittura on painting from 1435, and De Re Aedificatoria on architecture from 1452. De Statua on sculpture marked the first use of the terms additive sculpture in which material is added to create a work, subtractive sculpture in which material is carved away or removed to reveal a work, while also emphasizing naturalistic treatments and classical proportions. De la Pittura, on painting, in this book, he codified Brunelleschi's one-point linear perspective, as well as the concepts of composition, proportion, and the use of disegno, design or line, and colorito, or coloring, in creating pictorial harmony. He drew upon the contemporary practices of artists like Donatello, Ghiberti, Luca della Robbia, and Masaccio though positing them within a theoretical basis that drew upon humanist literature and the classical works of the Romans and Greeks. Renaissance humanism is a belief that placed human life at the center of the universe. Petrarch, or Francesco Petrarca, was an early leader of humanism. He was a 14th century poet who has been called the founder of humanism as well as a founder of the Renaissance. He was also a noted scholar and collector of classical texts. He rediscovered the works of classical authors like the Roman Cicero. His poetry was also revolutionary in that he wrote in Italian rather than the Latin of medieval Europe. Reviving classical texts became key to humanist thought. Niccolò de Niccoli is another leader of humanist thought, primarily due to his extensive library of Latin and Greek classical texts. He was also closely associated with Cosimo de' Medici. Brunelleschi's buildings and designs were widely employed by later architects. His innovations included the use of round columns with classical capitals, circular arches, segmented domes, and all of this constructed through mathematical ratios. 
Another innovation by Brunelleschi was Pietra Serena, or Serene Stone, a decorative motif that combined white stone walls with grey architectural features. An example of the use of Pietra Serena is the Ospedal degli Innocenti, or the Hospital of the Innocents, from 1419 to 27. The use of modular design and a church configured in the shape of a Latin cross was another Brunelleschi innovation, such as used in Santo Spirito from around 1428 or the San Lorenzo from around 1425. And his centrally planned church designs were widely adopted throughout the Renaissance such as the Santa Maria degli Angeli from 1434. Artists also began to experiment with oil painting, such as Antonello da Messina's Sibio Crucifixion and Piero della Francesca's Flagellation of Christ from around 1455, where he experimented with oil and tempera on wood. Artists began to be interested in new subject matter, especially Greek and Roman mythology, as we can see in Botticelli's Birth of Venus from around 1485. Artists began to paint portraits of individuals, of nobles, such as Piero della Francesca's portraits of the Duke and Duchess of Urbino from 1465 to 72, or some began to paint ordinary people like Domenico Ghirlandaio, who pioneered the portrait, focusing on deeply individualized but ordinary people, as seen in his portrait of an old man with his grandson from, from 1490. Other subject matter that became popular were battle scenes, such as Paolo Ocello's Battle of Romano from 1435 to 1460, depicting the 1432 battle between Florence and Siena. Let's look at sculpture from this era. The naturalism and classical proportions of Roman and Greek sculpture inspired their works, though interpreted through the era's emphasis on individuality and humanism. The period's most noted sculptures were created using the lost wax process, also revived from the Roman era. Donatello was considered to be the greatest sculptor of the early Renaissance, in part due to his range of subject matter and his capacity for individualistic expression of each. This can be seen in his innovatively eroticized statue of David or his powerfully expressive later work Penitent Magdalene from 1453 to 55. Another artist that is a great example of early Renaissance work is Sandro Botticelli, who created the birth of Venus, among other popular paintings.